one more hello and welcome back this is an update to a video i did two weeks ago honeybee radiance video number five where we talked about dynamic shading context and schedules e plus schedules and i made a mistake and i was so sure i did not make a mistake i was so sure it works fine because it doesn't tell you there's a mistake this is also a shout out to the person who actually spotted the mistake, Mr. Matthias Sonderskov. And I hope I pronounce it correctly. If not, please let me know. Th this is exactly what I want with this channel is uh, people actually engage and we learn all together. And I'm somebody who embraces mistakes. I learn the most out of mistakes uh, and the mistakes I make. In fact, my whole journey in uh, Rhino, Grasshopper, my whole learning journey in school and in university and my musical journey they are all it's all about trial and error and uh, getting from one level to the next and, and and then you fail and then you start again and you fail again and well sometimes you succeed and that's all what's happening in the background because when i show you when i put the video together and i trim it and i cut it down to 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 a small presentation you don't realize how, and how much time actually goes into uh, the work. Okay, so let's very quickly discuss what I did wrong. And um, I can also give you a, a small workaround. It's not ideal, but it's, uh, I think it's something. Yeah, so I hope you can remember my scripts. Um, here we have uh, some calculation, annual irradiance. We also did the uh, irradiance. We also, I also tried the, so I tried both basically, annual irradiance calculation and the annual daylight, daylight calculation. And both have the same issue. And you can remember that we did um, this schedule. We actually copied the schedule from one of the example files. And we used the schedule in here, in the E plus transparency schedule. That's all great. And, and I have to say, it's a bit misleading, really, because you would assume that uh, if, if I use the transparency schedule on a shade, it would automatically work with radiance, but it does not. It's called E plus transparency shader uh, schedule, and it only works with, e, with the energy modeling and not with uh, radiance calculation so um that's that's a pity and it's very annoying really but it doesn't work and i tested it so what i did i so in in here as we discussed before is are these factors for uh, the whole year 8760 uh entries and we have um the winter where where the tree is basically trans fully transparent which is it's not 100% true, but um, we assume. And then we have spring as a transition period leading up to summer where it's fully opaque, which is also not 100% true, but we just assume it. And then it's um, again transition period in autumn where the tree leaves all the, uh, loses all the leaves, where the tree loses all the leaves. And then it goes back to winter. And that's, that's fine, but yeah, it doesn't work with radiance. Radiance does not uh, recognize these schedules. So how what what did I try actually? I I made a simpler list, um, which is basically just a, a list of eight thousand seven hundred sixty entries where I can change um, it's either opaque or not opaque for all the entries, and I can um, basically with a slider can choose uh, if it's only half fully transparent or opaque and so on. And I realized there is variation in the output, but that's not coming from the schedule. It comes from the calculation itself, what I mean by that. So if I run this now, so I'm using this very simple list and I said everything is transparent. The schedule is already in here and I can run this. I will use the annual daylight. It's easier, it runs easier and faster. And we now look at the output. So we look at here at the, the um, daylight autonomy result in percentage. And we have 3% as a maximum and uh, zero as a minimum as, as expected. Because I, put, I took this room and I put this shading in front of it. And it's supposed to be completely opaque 
uh, transparent because we used it with zero, a list of zeros should be completely transparent, but it only gives us 3%. So there's a small gap in between and there's some light going in, which is a bit, which is basically more or less reflected from the surface and that goes into that room. So that already tells us that it's not, um, it's not really working. Funny thing is, um, if I change that to let's say 0.5, so half opaque. Now you can see I have here the, the, the maximum. The maximum has changed. And that that made me believe that um, there was a difference in the output. So I'm, uh, I was like, uh, the, the difference was not a lot, but I thought, okay, so it works. But actually it does not. If I run this again, with the same number. Suddenly it's 4.36. It seems like there is some kind of uh, variation within the calculation. The calculation seems like to create a certain variation and maybe it might change if I'm choosing a different parameter for a, a, more, a more exact radiance parameter, but it, it seems like it creates a bit of a random data within a certain range so what could we do if we want to use that schedule now we will use we will see how that works in the energy modeling there it should hopefully work i haven't tried it yet but it yeah the devil lies in the details yeah sorry i have some issues with my camera but i hope you can still hear me i had to record this in two episodes because i didn't press record <laughs> um, I was talking just to myself, but yeah, I hope you can hear me and I will try to fix my camera until the next video. So what can we do if we still want to use the gradual transparency shift schedule where we assume that a tree will lose its leaves during winter and that's why then in summer it gets all the leaves back and there are these transi transition periods uh, in spring and in autumn. And that's all determined by numbers between zero and one. Zero means uh, transparent and uh, they have the transition periods and in summer it's completely opaque which is one and then in autumn you have the transition period again but gradually goes back to zero. I guess it's not 100% but it's a start and every pl all the plants are different and they have different length and how long they keep their leaves and so on but it's this is just an example. So okay we learned that we cannot use this schedule for our daylight autonomy or any other irradiance calculation that doesn't seem to work but it would be still still very cool to uh, use that that shift uh, and um, it's it really annoys me to that that it doesn't work so what could we do so we cannot use this the output here is a schedule it's really just the name uh, gradual transparency shift the time uh, the period and the, and the time step and um, and I guess E plus the, the energy plus then basically feeds these numbers somewhere in the background and calculates whatever it needs to calculate and probably it creates or it calculates an average of all the numbers but that's what I think it does anyway. So we could do the same. And we have um, we have the radiance modifier. So we could take these numbers and feed it into the modifier, into the um, material modifier for that shading. We can't use uh, all the numbers as they are. That doesn't work. So we, if we do this, uh, of course it doesn't work. Or does it? <laughs> are you kidding me? No, okay, no, it does not. Good that we uh, understood that. Yes, so it doesn't work. But we can uh, calculate an average out of these. Average, if you put this in here, that doesn't work either because this data um, container doesn't translate it well that this tool will read it as numbers so uh, or uh, as, as float numbers. So let's get another translation here, which is this tool here, number. Get this in here that works and now and now it works it might also work if i do this but i'm not sure no it does not lots of mistakes today and now this can go in here and if we now look at it and you can see the average is just 0 0.5 of course because we have um, summer and winter winter is zero summer is one and the transition periods they are same length that's why 
the average is just 0 0.5 and that could go into here and i believe that um the e plus schedule will calculate something similar it will calculate an, aver an average of these numbers so in a way it's it's a workaround but it, i think it's um a valid one so that yeah looks already much more realistic here now we can look at the output again so now it's 84 percent 84 percent so that's um quite different already and of course we might need to play now with the refraction because a tree is not glass and maybe we can remove that it doesn't matter it's just I just try to show you what what the work around could be so what if we have now a period of time where the number doesn't end up with 0 0.5 i mean that was very easy but what if we need to what, what we need to what, what if we need to apply a period and then if you then have a period object like this you would then use this everywhere where you need to apply that period like for example here and i don't know in other areas where it's necessary for example in the weather the, the wea um, object as you can see here i was using one before um, so what if we for example have a, um, a period from let's say may to june april may june starting in may ending on the last day in june you can see the end dates so the period would be then from the the, the first of may to the 30th of june and the dates and the hours of the year so we know now that we have uh in here we have 8760 values which are equal to the hours of the year and from that we want to select a sub a sub list we want to select a portion of that uh, data set here we have the values and here we have the, the index basically so this is the index of the of the hours we're using as you can as you can see in here if we go in here we see that every number although now it's this is all zero is 0, 0 0.1 where it gradually gets more and here you can see this the index this is my index and we're choosing we're choosing with the index what we're creating here we're choosing the sub lists from that list so we need to work with lists we can use the uh, list the sub list item so this we want to use in order to um, create our sub list and this needs a domain so we feed in the list in here and then this list list then goes back into here and of course i don't want to run this now it doesn't work because it doesn't know what what the sub list looks like so we need a domain. A domain is basically trying to uh, determine the range of that, like having a start and end value from the index. So we're now talking about the index of that list. And that's what we have here. So here we know we have 1,464 values. These are the two months, May and June. And they start with the index 2,880. Uh, 2880 that's my first number so I can go here and get a list item so I take take this list and uh, I choose the first item in the list which is my 2880 that goes um, that is my uh, the start of the domain and then I can take another item which is called the list length item um, list length that gives me the number, the, the index of the last number in the list, in this list. Sorry, no, it, it tells me how long the list is. It's basically the index of the index, right? So, because this, although this works as an index for this list, it also has an index. So the list length tells me the last item in the list minus, no, plus one. Just, to, just for you to understand, if I choose this here and I put it in here, you see, I'm choosing here this, the last one. Oh, sorry, I need to uh, put this in here. This is my list. And now I'm choosing the last item in the list. I'm measuring the length of the list, which is 1,464. And I have here 1,464 values. But we need to be careful because if I look here, it I have 2,880. And here I also have 2,880. This is because we start counting from zero and this item doesn't look at this doesn't count 
the items in the list, it, it looks for the index of the list. And the index of the list of this 1464 is the first item in the list again. It's a, it's a bit hard to grasp, but what we can do is just uh, subtract subtract one, and then we have our last item in the list. So here we have 2,800, uh, sorry, 2,880, and here we have 4,343. Before we had um, the item 2,880, because again, we're starting counting from zero, and the number, the index 1,464 is again the first item in the list because we are choosing that uh, the, the, the list is wrapping around itself. So it's looping, basically. I can, uh, we can also turn it off. Um, we can say false. Now, now it actually creates an error because it doesn't have any, there is no, there's no index for or there's no number with the index 1464. It's a bit tricky to grasp, but um, or maybe for you it's not at all. I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> trying to understand it myself. Uh, but and I also try to explain it in the most simplest way. Uh, but I yeah, it's um, it's quite abstract. Anyway, so now we have we have the boundary. We have the lo lower boundary and the upper boundary of that range. These are the these basically these are the hours of the, the the period, the first hour of the period and the last hour of the period, and that goes into the domain. So we need to create a domain first. Construct domain. With that, we can determine the first item and the last item in the list. gives our uh, domain you can see now it's uh, 2880 to 4343 and that goes in here and now we have um, all the values within that range so we we're selecting out of that period with that period tool we selecting the exact data what we need for that specific days that goes in here into the average slider and into here we're not finished we're almost finished so the problem there's a problem here we talk about glass modifier we talk about the glass modifier the glass modifier is uh, it's it's a very simple modifier it, it has only transparency it's a basically how much light goes through and then refraction let's assume we don't have any refraction so because it's a tree so it's leaves. We probably would be better to use, um, let's see if, there, if we could use another translucent modifier maybe. But there it becomes more difficult because it has different types of trans transparencies, which could be, uh, it might be more accurate for sure for a tree, but um, I mean, you can play with that around. Now, still we need to be careful because here in the modifier, we determine transparency, whereas in the schedule, we determine opacity. So it's the opposite. So whatever goes in here need to be the opposite of uh, the opacity. As you can, as you know, we are here in a transition period and um, the opacity starting to become more. That's why it's not, it's not half anymore. And it's not, so it's, it's moving to, towards total opacity like no transparency but that would mean in, in the transparency world that would mean the opposite so we need to um, add another apply some math here again which is um, just a very simple subtraction just give you one we subtract this whatever this in what's in here from this one that goes in here so this is the opposite the rest basically in percentage would be it's now only 35 percent transparent and 65 or 64 or 65 percent opaque and yeah now we can run it again and i believe i don't know but i believe that the e plus schedule 
for the energy modeling doesn't work much different because at the end you need to calculate the average. So I, I can imagine that it's not really much, much different. That correlates with the number before because we had a bit more which represented like half, half transparent, half opaque and now we have actually a bit more that means we have less sunlight going in or less, less daylight. Okay, I hope, I hope it's more clear. Um, apologize for the detour <laughs> but on the other hand that's how it is uh, can't change it and I don't want because at the end uh, it's part of the journey to make these mistakes okay see you in the next video oh yeah um, we have on Saturday we have uh, my first live honeybee uh, Q&A if you cannot join, uh, don't worry. If if it works fine, we might just do it more often. And I will also try to announce memberships. I might start with memberships, but I can tell you more on Saturday. Until then, yeah, stay tuned and uh, see you on Saturday, hopefully.